So hello, my name is Vatim Salomonovic. I head product management at VNS. And we're going to move on to our second demo today. And the demo is about application visibility at the branch. We talked about a lot about connectivity. Uh, but connectivity is really transport. We want to automate that. But we want to enable applications. And I'll, let me tell you what we mean by enable applications. Nuage, did, that's the device, and that's what we, we, we have spoken to about uh, to date. Uh, but there's a question that enterprise talk about and say, you know what? You enable my branch to connect. That's great. But for, don't forget that I need to enable applications. My users don't use the network per se. They use it to transport their communications. But what they actually consume are applications. How can you help me in the application space? And some of the common questions that I get and the most early use cases I think I put up for your reference here. Imagine I have LAN switches in the environment and I wanted to perform logging functions, syslog functions. And syslog runs over UTP, you can get one over TCP, but I want to, but I, and I don't want to enable TCP because it's a legacy platform, for example, and I don't want to enable security because it doesn't support it. How about, can I have an application that gathers syslog information from all my LAN switching, all my Wi-Fi endpoints, or anything that can export syslog, for example, you aggregate it for me and then initiate one R syslog connection encrypted to my syslog server. How about, can I perform an audit where I send a policy down to a gateway that sits there and audits what ports are up on all my LAN switches, what Wi-Fi endpoints are active, what Macs are connected to the Wi-Fi endpoints? Can I perform local auditing for compliance? Some of our financial guys that we're working with are very regulatory compliance required, so they need to audit, and there's some strong, very large numbers that I've heard that auditing compliance alone of networking telecommunication system runs into the tens of million dollars per year. How can I automate these things? Okay? I'm about to, if I'm a DevOps guy, I'm about to move from a DC application that I just created. It's, it's, a, it's in QA, it's finished QA, and I want to move it to a production system. So now all my branch users can connect to it. How do I know what the experience is going to be? Can you create a concept that allows me to run, if you like, virtual users at the branch, to test against my dev environment, to emulate branches connecting at whatever rate that I want. And once I'm satisfied with the results, then I know only then I'll move my application into production and let real users use it. So how can this device maybe emulate a user at a branch? And it goes on and on and on. How do I deal with application packaging and distribution? So, yep, you may, I might call you and you might give me application X, but how do I send it to the site? How do I install it? Who deals with the lifecycle management of all that? Any questions? Somebody said something. So, we talk about application distribution of packaging and what we're announcing and what I want to suggest and, and highlight here today is that the power of network <laughs> connectivity bundled with the distribution and packaging system of Docker with local containers running on this platform now enables application distribution, like we've done in the data center. We're now bringing the whole container environment, the whole application instantiation capability, all the way out to the branch users to enable these applications that we talk about. And what is the function of Nuage? It's not about launching, it's not about creating Docker uh, applications for users, although we may create an app system and help evangelize the system, is first of all use open community. There's a, there's a thriving open community that creates applications already in existing. Our me function is to automate the attachment of, net, of the existing containers into the network. And that's what we're exactly done. We enable the power, and I'll show you through a demo of how we do that. We enable the power of Docker containers directly on our platform at the branch to perform and answer all these questions. And we'll demonstrate some really cool use cases to you guys. For those who are not familiar, and I think to virtualize or containerize um, is obvious tradebacks and benefits of each approach. And it depends on your use case. We're not religious about whether you containerize and what you virtualize. You can do both. The reason we chose containers in the f for the small end branch devices is because of the distribution and packaging and the lightweight systems that it has. Uh, <coughs> looking at VMs requires CMS, requires larger footprints on devices. Um, and those apply more to the high-end branch devices. So we, we'll do both. There's no 
Okay, I'll start with I'll start with my question. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I was going to start it. too. Saying, okay. <laughs> he keeps looking down here. So he knows one. Yeah, I was, I was that again. Go so, ahead. Yeah. So a few things, and you know, jump in. Oh no, go ahead. Because I think you're going to hit where I was going. Okay, so first off, uh, scheduling. Are you using a scheduler that's out there? Or did you write your own? No. So currently, what we are uh, on the Docker system, uh, we use CG groups. Okay. To actually control the resource memory and functional and access into the uh, into the base operating system, in a, into the Docker host, if you like. Okay. Uh, that doesn't actually perform for ultimate scheduling. Yep. We'll prove that over time. But currently allows us to, to contain the resource utilization of these containers as they come up into a pre-scribed space that don't kind of distribute across the whole, the whole environment. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just ask the use case question first uh, or second. Um, what would be uh, an ideal container to deploy? Oh, so we have, yeah, we'll show you. That's exactly the demo. Okay. And that's where I was going to go. Is whether it's, what's going to convince whether it's, me uh, Whether it's ideal or not, that's, um, not but these are some of the ideas. I mean, I have ideas, but I, yeah. I, I'm curious what, yeah. you know, because you guys didn't develop this because there's clearly a need, and I'm curious what, you, what you've been seeing. Right, so I kind of try to list what are the top of mind initial use cases sure. are. Uh, and, so, and it's so kind of a sandbox. these are all network-centric, like That's from a network operations perspective, those right. are all. Right, absolutely. So you're, you're, not a, you're not just saying deploying containers for business applications. You're saying containers are a vehicle for network operations tools. Well, that's one, yeah, that's one, one. Today what we're seeing those vehicles or applications that are getting exercised at the branch mm -hmm. seem to be more network operation-centric. Uh, the framework that we have provided does not restrict what type of application you, de you deploy. We'll, we'll plumb any application that you're kind of launching, if you like. Um, and we, by the way, we pull from, from Docker Hub, and there's over 100,000 applications there, sure. and go, and, and go, and it, yeah. I think depending upon the type of business, and the, you know, you will have capability, and customers will have capability to use any of the applications that they seem, they deem as relevant, yeah. um, and they could be user-facing applications. Yeah. Presumably, so, so I want to go ahead and throw one out, and then I'll be quiet. So, yeah, go ahead. As a, yeah. like a POS system, I'm thinking. Like some sort of POS. Yeah, it could be a POS system. That you would want to deploy you. at the branch, that way if you lost connection back to the data center instead of doing like a dumb terminal type. Huh. It, it, it could potentially be that, depending okay. upon what that use case is. You know, if it's a Tim Hortons, maybe. <laughs> but, but presumably, whatever it is has to be able to run on, yeah. on that, on the, little, on the gateway, right? Like, what, what type of hardware is actually... So we have multiple form factors. This is a small okay. branch device. So as you go up the front, you get more CPU, you get storage. So it depends on the... We, we also see that actually, as you deploy things in the smaller branches, the requirements and the size of application deploy are actually much smaller. Uh, as you get to bigger, you get m many more users, you need to scale your application that you're deploying there. So the form factor is kind of, uh, there's a hardware resource limitation, but they deal with, depending on the size of the branch, actually directly proportional to what you deploy. Uh, Intel or ARM, like that? It's Intel systems. Okay. Okay. Which, which family? What? <laughs> oh, this is an Atom-based system. Oh. Wow. Are they actually, uh, you, the, the latest advancements are actually in the Atom processor family. These well. things are pretty, pretty nice, actually, what they've done, <laughs> what Intel has done. There you go. Okay, let's jump on to uh, the, the demonstration. Or demo. Let's go. That's right. Okay, so we're back at the VPN designer, we're back at our store. Uh, and, and, and by the way, I, I have a store um, that we talked about here. It sits here, reported at 7.55. Okay. And we have an existing store, store number one. It's that one. <coughs> and in store number one, uh, we can deploy an application. But how about we go to store number two and deploy an application? This is example applications that we have created. Uh, users are welcome to pull their own application directly uh, and implement them as well. But it's something that we have done ourselves. Um, and I'd like to kind of start with, with something called uh, Cloud User Simulator. Remember we talked about a use case where I'm launching an application, but before I roll it out to the masses, I want to see how users from varying locations, 
what experience they're going to uh, experience. If the experience is not good enough, it doesn't meet my requirement, how about I don't roll out the application and resize the application before giving real users? So we have somebody called Clive. Clive is a virtual user. It's a, he's a, Clive is a container. Uh, <laughs> right. So uh, I'm, I'm launching Clive. And, and, and when I launch Clive, really? Poor old Clive. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can yeah. see, but Clive has got an IP address. You know. <clears throat> Let me just. An IP address of one, a 10, 179, 82, 69. And Clive is now simulating connectivity uh, to an application uh, that sits in the data center. Okay, and it's come back, okay, uh, this is the type of latency, for example, and this is the packet size and throughput that I'm able to measure. And you can go into that application and change the packet size, change the <laughs> rapid download speeds. You can go pretty much anywhere you want. Uh, but that's an example of, of of Clive going in branch number one, store number one. You could do the same thing for store two, or you can pick all your East Coast branches and, and launch these things to the application. You go global and test loads on your application before even rolling it out to production. That's an example of a use case. How many uh, per branch? Can you, do, can you do more than one? Absolutely. So let's do a second one. So we have something called a store director agent. There's something interesting about a store, store director agent. So you're just spawning containers as you're doing this. Correct? Exactly. In real time. Oh. Mm. This is in real time created. They get plumbed into the network. And one of the issues about containers and some of the development, because containers are fairly early in the development cycle, if you like, is about the security concerns uh, associated with application and host OS. But there's also networking concerns. Nuage deals with the multi-tenancy and security in the networking space. We actually fix and, and help move that industry forward by exactly that. We bring uh, Nuage capabilities to Docker containers at the branch. Yep. Where, where are the IP addresses coming from? Are, are these just slash 32s that are oh, the system from somewhere? Is that for a site space for? Exactly a... right. The system <coughs> auto creates when I created the site, store number two, uh, we create an app subnet. Okay. And it's got a range. And then things spawn up in there. You can plumb the, the container into any subnet actually you want. Uh, and then emulate users coming from the guest world or from the retail world and start really giving the flexibility of how things are operating. So, so this is a, a store director. A store director is an application that we have in our data center. And as these store agents come up online, imagine you're deploying these devices in a number of retail store locations. They spin up and they auto register with the application, with the server side saying, oh, hello. And everybody wonders what these Legos are. If you think about what these Legos are, that's like, a store, retail store number one, at one, and retail store number two. They're both up. We can actually define, an example application may look at defining what is the opening and closing time in that store. And that little application sits there, monitors the time, in terms of the lights and the Wi-Fi at closing time, and next morning, turns it on. It's an example of an application. To show you the power we're going. So if I kind of theoretically click Turn on. Pretty damn cool. The lights are just turned on. The oh, Wi-Fi just got out. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and if I turn on store oh, number nice. two. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man. See that? So imagine I want to send somebody to my branch. The branch is closed. I want to control the lights because it doesn't forget the lights. So he's in store number two, and I, I turn off the branch. <laughs> okay, you can extend these concepts out very easily uh, to sensors in the branch and so forth. But really what I want to take you on a journey is imagine if you gave the ability to spawn applications wherever you needed them, plumb it into the right VPN, leveraging open community-based approaches, a new ecosystem can develop. And I think that's what actually the needs are. We're here using networking and networking construct, constructs to transport, but not forgetting that we're doing it because of applications, giving the power for end users to build their own applications and innovate. So at that point, because also of time, um, sort of questions, I think I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. And obviously, if I leave my store and forget to set the alarm and turn the lights off exactly. and all that, I can 
exactly. connect to something and send a trigger and my Docker container will spin up. And <laughs> I, I could actually go, I could go and delete my container and, 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 and the, the store will, that, that cool. store agent will deregister <laughs> and that store will oh, disappear. I knew there had, 